Uh, so we're back in the warehouse, and now we're going to talk about return air bypass. <clears throat> this is a unit that doesn't have return air bypass. Return air bypass would be located down there if it had it. Let's look at this unit over here, and you can see the difference. Okay, I've got that panel, the screws taken out of it so we can take a look in there. So what is return air bypass? It is a passive device. When I say passive, it means it, 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 there's no servicing, there's no moving parts, there's no nothing to do with it. It doesn't break. Um, there's nothing to fix, nothing to do at all. It just sits there. It's a damper that's open, period. This is it here. You could put a damper actuator on there, but we don't need to do that for our purposes at Costco. So all we're doing with this thing is we're... <clears throat> bypassing the evaporator coil. This is your evaporator. This is the thing that cools all the air coming into your machine, your uh, store. These dampers send the air through the coil, cools off. That's traditional cooling. But on this unit, we've got this here. There's an opening down here. It's just a bypass, an area where air can come up. Let's see if I can put this inside here. You can get I'm going to go right inside. Right down there, you'd be looking down on the sales floor um, in a Costco. Now, if I bring this camera in here, you can see. I don't know if you can see it or not, but there you go. There's some air filters there. So you're, the air is coming up from the space, going through this damper, and underneath the cooling coil. So it's not being cooled at all. It's just completely bypassed. So uh, here is a little graphic out of the return air bypass uh, flyer, I guess you call it. So this is where we just were, right? There's our damper. There's our evaporator coil. There's the bypass passage right there. There's the bank of filters, <clears throat> right? So this shows a return air coming up from the space and coming through here and bypassing the evaporator hot or return air bypass. That's why they call it return air bypass, right? But other air, the other 80% or so can follow this path and go through the traditional route or from the outside, right? So what we can do with this is this air is not being con conditioned whatsoever. Say it's 70 degrees. Well, the air coming through here uh, it could be hitting this at 80 degrees, who knows. But uh, depending on how fast we're running the compressors over here, <clears throat> we can make this coil very, very cold. We can make it colder than a traditional coil. We can shoot for 45 degrees on that coil. But the end result is we're mixing this air, unconditioned air, with this air coming out of the, the cooling coil. And when it mixes, maybe we end up with 55 degree air. So that would mean that this would have to be, say, 45 degrees. The colder you make this coil, the more productive it is in removing water out of the air. So there's a benefit right there. And we're not overcooling the space because we're mixing right back up with air coming back from the space. And something else to mention here because of this design, to again avoid overcooling the space, you could, because you're mixing the, both of these air, these uh, volumes of air right about here, and this, the volume of this air is about 20% of the total volume. If you ran this coil at, say, 55 degrees, which would be a traditional discharge air temperature on any other machine, well, you're mixing it with this, and you might end up with 65 degrees down here. So you would not overcool the space with that temperature and you'd still be dehumidifying. Just a final note, it's important to state that this is, um, the re return air bypass is really for light dehumidification loads. If you've got a heavy load, you would need a hot gas reheat setup and maybe even combine the two. And on some machines we do in fact do that.